Let's look now at bites and stings. In Australia, there are many animal and insect species that bite and sting. Most insect bites and stings are not poisonous, but the stings of some insects, such as wasps, bees, and bites from some spiders and snakes can indeed be harmful. Some insects feed on blood from animals or people. Bites from these insects are usually not poisonous, so mosquitoes, fleas, lice, bed bugs. Some biting insects can spread diseases such as Ross River virus, encephalitis, and malaria. Poisonous stings and bites usually only cause localised pain where the bite has occurred. There is a red swollen area around the bite sometimes. Non-poisonous bites can cause pain and swelling around the bite at first, followed by itching later on. They do not usually cause reactions away from the area of the bite unless the bite becomes infected or an allergic reaction is occurring. Some of the common symptoms of an allergic reaction include hives, itching, and stomach cramps. The most dangerous response to a bite or sting is anaphylaxis. Symptoms of anaphylaxis can include breathing difficulties, swelling in the upper airway and tongue, shock, and vomiting. Anaphylaxis can be fatal, but is treatable if responded too quickly. A person who has severe reactions to bites and stings may need to carry with them an adrenaline auto-injector. So we're going to look here at the pressure immobilization technique. Um, and you're going to use this not only for snake bites, for, but for a few different creatures, which we'll go into in a moment. The first thing you're going to do before any treatment is D, R, S, A, B, C, D. Make sure that you're safe. Make sure that your casualty is responding. Call for an ambulance if you need to. You're going to rest and reassure the casualty. Use the pressure immobilization technique. So apply local pressure at first to the side of the bite using a bandage, then Apply a broad bandage from the furthest point of the limb to the closest over the casualty's clothing to further apply pressure and immobilization to the limb. You're going to ensure that the casualty doesn't move, so this may also involve splinting a limb. Call 000 for an ambulance. Note the time the bandage was applied and the site of the bite. and Stay with the casualty until paramedics arrive. Australia is home to some of the world's most poisonous animals. Thousands of bites and stings occur every year in Australia. While most bites and stings cause only minor irritation, some are life-threatening. Fast and appropriate first aid of bites and stings can stop or slow the spread of venom, which can save lives. The most common method of preventing the spread of venom is application of the Pressure Immobilisation Technique, or PIT. The pressure immobilization technique aims to slow the movement of venom from the bite site into the blood circulation. Applying the PIT will help delay the poisoning until appropriate medical assistance is received. Note that it can only be used on an arm or a leg. To apply this technique, apply a firm bandage over the bite site. Use firm pressure, about the same pressure you would apply to a sprain. Bandage the entire limb. Start at the end of the limb, fingers or toes, and bandage upward over the first bandage to cover as much of the limb as possible. Immobilize the limb. Use a splint or other device to prevent the limb from moving. For example, a piece of wood could be tied to the leg to immobilize the limb. If the bite is not on a limb, firm, direct pressure on the bite site may be useful. It is important that the casualty lies down and remains still and as calm as possible so that the poison does not circulate through the body. Make sure you follow the DRS ABCD action plan and keep the person calm while you wait for an ambulance to arrive. Do not remove the bandage once applied. Do not apply a tourniquet. Do not wash, cut or bleed the bite site. Do not suck out the venom. The pressure immobilization technique is recommended for all Australian venomous snake bites, funnel web spider bites, blue ringed octopus stings, cone shell stings.
So you would use the pressure mobilization technique for snake bites. Uh, it can be really hard to tell the difference between a venomous snake and a non-venomous snake. So if at all there's any doubt, treat for the worst possible case. So Australia's top 10 most venomous snakes, uh, they include the Eastern Brown, the Western Brown, the Midland Tiger Snake, Inland Taipan, Coastal Taipan, the King Brown, uh, the Lowlands Copperhead, the Small Eyed Snake, Common Death Adder, and the Red Bellied Black Snake. And like I said, it can be really hard to tell the difference, so don't be too worried if you can't identify the snake. Snake facts. There are about 3,000 reported snake bites each year in Australia, and there are only between two and four fatalities. So with good first aid care, the outcome can be really good. Australian snakes have the ability to decide how much venom they give you. Um, however, it's important to remember that baby snakes or young snakes will always give you all of their venom because they feel like they always need to protect themselves. When bitten, a snake injects venom into the body under the skin or it's subcutaneous or into the muscle, not into the bloodstream. And the venom travels through your body in the lymphatic system, which is why we try and keep our casualty as still as possible. Snakes don't want to bite us. We are too big to be their meal. Uh, but if they really do feel threatened, they'll give you quite a bit of venom. And any snake bite venom is always dangerous. So signs and symptoms vary from snake to snake um, and for how much venom there might be in your casualty system. So they might suffer a high state of anxiety. I think that would come with any snake bite, I imagine. Puncture marks, continued bleeding from the puncture site, headache, nausea and vomiting, abdominal or chest pain, drowsiness, blurred or double vision, breathing difficulties, cold pale skin, drooping eyelids, voice changes, dizziness or faintness, difficulty speaking or swallowing and dark urine. So I'm just going to go back over those do nots. Uh, don't wash the venom off the skin. It doesn't really matter if it does wipe away, um, but it can be used to identify the type of snake. So if you can avoid washing it off, that's always a good idea. Uh, remember not to cut the bitten area and try and suck it out. Um, it doesn't work uh, at all and it causes unnecessary trauma to your casualty. Don't use a tourniquet. Keeping your casualty still will be sufficient in reducing the amount of venom that's moving around. Uh, so a tourniquet is not required. Don't try and catch it. It's already uh, aggravated. And so you going after it is only going to cause subsequent snake bites. Don't have the casualty walk or move themselves unless, of course, they are in danger. And don't remove the bandage. Once it's on, it needs to stay on. Um, and it's important that it stays in place. The bite of a Sydney funnel web is absolutely one that you're going to treat with the pressure and mobilization technique. Now, there have been 13 recorded deaths attributed to the Sydney funnel web. Um, there are about 30 to 40 people bitten in Sydney each year. Um, however, with good first aid care, the outcome can be very positive. Now, the Sydney funnel web is extremely venomous. They do build burrows in moist soil and rockeries and compost heaps. It can also be found in shoes or clothes that have been left on the ground. The funnel web can survive for some time underwater and is often found on the bottom of pools and caught in pool filters. But remember that although it's submerged in water, it doesn't mean that it's dead. So a casualty bitten by a Sydney funnel web may experience tingling around the mouth, muscle spasm and weakness, pain at the side of the bite, profuse sweat, sweating, copious amounts of saliva, an outpouring of fluid from the lungs, breathing difficulty, respiratory arrest and unconsciousness. The blue ringed octopus is a marine creature that you're going to treat with the pressure and mobilization technique. Um, it's found in Australia's coastal waters. Um, it's extremely dangerous, but it's very small. It's only about this big. It's a sandy brownie color until it gets upset. When it's upset, it flashes blue and yellow rings all over it. Um, there have been three recorded deaths um, due to the blue ring octopus. There have been two in Australia and one in Singapore, and this is in the last century. So it may not be a painful um, bite, but it, you can sometimes just identify it by a small spot of, of blood on the skin. Um, it 
may not be painful. They do use an anesthetic when they bite, so it's hard to tell that there's a bite occurred until your casualties start showing other symptoms like tingling around their mouth, mild weakness, paralysis, respiratory distress, and respiratory arrest. The cone shell is another marine creature that you're going to treat with a pressure immobilization technique. Um, this creature is found in tropical water. Um, the envenomation occurs when the barb is fired from the pointed end of the shell into the casualty. Um, you can see in the map there how widespread it is, but it does tend to be a tropical creature. The symptoms of a sting can be severe pain, paralysis, respiratory distress, and respiratory arrest. Spiders and insects. Redback spiders may cause pain and illness to a baby or small child, but are not a threat to life in normal circumstances. Only the female bite is dangerous, and about 250 people a year need to receive the antivenom. Signs and symptoms might include pain at the site of the bite, nausea and vomiting, sweating at the bite site, which can develop generally, aches, pains, and general weakness that may persist for several days to weeks, muscle weakness and spasm, joint pain, and abdominal pain. White-tailed spiders are common. Bites are fairly frequent because spiders are found in homes, especially between pieces of fabric, clothing, sheets or towels. Signs and symptoms might include burning pain, possible itching, local inflammation and swelling. There is a common myth that white tails cause a flesh-eating bacteria. It has been proven that there is no relationship between white tail spiders and necrotic ulcers. This has been proven to be untrue by both Dr. Jeff Isbister, an expert in envenomation at the University of Newcastle, and Michael Gray, a spider expert at the Australian Museum. Treatment. DRS, ABCD. Always make sure that you're safe and you're not going to get bitten too. Rest and reassure the casualty. Apply a cold compress to the bitten area to relieve pain. Seek medical attention if symptoms develop. Additional treatment for bee stings. Uh, the stinger is likely to be left in place and it's best if it's scraped out. Ticks. Remove the tick using fine tipped forceps or a tick spoon or tick free spray. Press the skin down around the tick and lift the tick gently to detach. Do not squeeze the body of the tick with fingers or forceps as the head might detach and bury its way into the skin. Leeches, uh, avoid pulling it off, uh, apply salt or an extinguished match and it'll, it'll fall off. Cover the wound as it may continue to bleed due to an anti-clotting agent in the leech's saliva. Box jellyfish. Box jellyfish stings can kill humans. Stings are excruciatingly painful, either initially or as an after effect. The ARC estimates that there is around 500,000 box jellyfish stings in Australia each year. There have been 69 recorded deaths since 1883. Signs and symptoms can include severe pain, irrational behaviour, rapid pulse, semi-consciousness, unconsciousness and cardiac arrest. The Irigangi. Irigangi jellyfish grows to about one cubic centimetre. They're found in Australia's tropical water from Bundaberg in Queensland around to Geraldton in WA. It is responsible for 50 to 100 people being hospitalised each year, yet is not as deadly as the box jellyfish. There have been two confirmed deaths. Signs and symptoms include severe pain in the torso, anxiety and sweating, rapid pulse, nausea and vomiting, hypertension, cardiac damage, fluid in the lungs and brain hemorrhage. Blue bottle. Blue bottles have no means of self propulsion. They rely on tides, currents and winds. They usually travel in groups and are a distinctive blue colour with an air bladder which floats on the surface and trails of blue tentacles. There are about 10,000 stings each year. Signs and symptoms can include sharp painful sting, tentacles sticking to the body or limbs, dull aches spreading to surrounding joints, redness and swelling in the affected area. Fish stings. The bull rout, stonefish and stingrays all have sharp spines that can cause deep wounds and inject venom deep into the tissue. Their spines can break off and be left in the casualty's wound. Signs and symptoms can include intense pain leading to irrational behaviour, swelling, local blue or grey discoloration, open wound, bleeding and an embedded stinger. Treatment for the box jellyfish and irukandji. DRS ABCD, make sure that you're safe and remove yourself and your casualty from the water. Seek medical attention. Apply liberal quantities of vinegar to the sting site for at least 30 seconds. Rest and reassure the casualty and resuscitate if required. 
The blue bottle, again, make sure that you're safe and remove your casualty and anyone else you can from the water. Remove any sticking tentacles using tweezers or gloves. Immerse the affected area in hot but not scalding water to relieve the pain. If the sting does not respond to hot water, then a cold compress or ice pack can sometimes help and seek medical attention if you need to. For the fish sting, again, make sure that you're safe and anyone around you can leave the water. Immerse the affected area in hot but not scalding water to relieve the pain. Control bleeding and support any embedded spines. If the sting does not respond to hot water, then a cold compress or ice pack can relieve the, the pain and seek medical attention. So, in an easy way to remember, with a tropical jellyfish sting, you're going to treat it with vinegar, and a non-tropical jellyfish sting, you're going to treat with hot water. Now, if you're not very sure, um, treat with vinegar, because those that you treat with vinegar are much more deadly than those that you don't. Poisons. A poison can be described as any substance, solid, liquid, gas, which causes harm and damage when it enters the body. A toxin is a poison made by a living organism, a plant, an animal, or a microorganism. A venom is a toxin which is injected by fang or sting, spider, snake, or fish. Types of poisoning. So poisons can enter the body in four different ways. They could be ingested or swallowed, either accidentally or on purpose, inhaled or breathed in, accessing the bloodstream very quickly as it passes through the alveoli and absorbed through the skin in the case of some medications or pesticides, may be injected through the skin directly into tissues or a blood vessel. Poisons can either be corrosive, such as acids, bleach, ammonia, petrol, turpentine, dishwashing powder, or non-corrosive, such as tablets, drugs, alcohol, plants, perfume. Signs and symptoms. The signs and symptoms of poisoning are wide, varied, and dependent on the substance. Look for clues such as containers or bottles, syringes or drug taking equipment, tablets or drugs, or the smell on, a br on the breath or fumes in the air. Other signs and symptoms might be vomiting, uh, confusion or hallucinations, abdominal pain, unconsciousness and sometimes seizures, burns around the mouth, breathing problems, cyanosis, blue or grey around their lips, headache, blurred vision, slurred speech. Carbon monoxide is a highly toxic, colourless, tasteless, odourless gas. It bonds more readily than oxygen does to the haemoglobin in our blood and reduces the oxygen carrying capacity in the blood, leading to hypoxia. Faulty home heaters, stoves and vehicle exhaust are most common causes of carbon monoxide poisoning. If you suspect carbon monoxide poisoning, open windows and remove the casualty from the hazard if possible. Call triple zero for an ambulance. Treating poisoning. Treating poisoning for a corrosive substance. Don't endanger yourself, make sure it's safe to help. Dilute the substance or wash it away if possible. Ingested substances, get the casualty to rinse out their mouth but don't swallow. Seek medical advice from Poisons Information Centre on 131126 and dial 000 for an ambulance if you need to. If the casualty becomes unconscious, open their airway and check for breathing. Resuscitate is necessary using a protective face shield to protect yourself from the hazardous substance. If the casualty is breathing effectively, place them in the recovery position and dial 000 for an ambulance. Non-corrosive substances. Dial 131126 for advice. They'll be able to tell you what to do and how dangerous it is. Give information about the poison if possible and take advice from the operator. If the casualty becomes unconscious, open their airway and check for breathing. Resuscitate is necessary using a protective face shield. If the casualty is breathing effectively, place them in the recovery position and dial 000 for an ambulance. Poisons Information Centre is available for advice on 131126. Inhaled substances. DRS, ABCD, and always make sure that you're safe first. Dial triple zero, possibly for the fire brigade and an ambulance. Move the casualty and yourself to fresh air if it's safe to get to the casualty. Loosen tight clothing and stay with the casualty until help arrives. Absorbed poisons. Again, make sure that you're safe. Ask the casualty to remove their contaminated clothing. It's already against their skin, so it's safer for them to remove it than for you to help. And place it in a plastic bag, avoiding contact with your own skin. 
Use an antidote as instructed in the safety data sheet. If it is not available, flush the casualty skin with large, large amounts of running water. Do not induce vomiting. This may put the airway in danger and burn the throat. Don't give anything to eat or drink at all. It helps paramedics if you are able to pass on any containers or other information about the substance. Find out how much has been taken, find out when it was taken, and keep any samples of vomit for hospital analysis. Record the names of chemicals, solvents or poisons involved in the incident. Contact Poisons Information on 131126 for specific advice on, and management. Send any containers and notes with the casualty to hospital and send a sample of vomit if the casualty vomits with the casualty to the hospital. Safety Data Sheet. Previously called a Material Safety Data Sheet, a safety data sheet provides information about hazardous chemicals and how they affect health and safety in the workplace. The SDS should be provided and kept with every chemical in the workplace. A safety data sheet can be obtained from the retailer, supplier or the internet and should be kept with all dangerous chemicals. A safety data sheet will identify the chemical, health hazards, safe handling and storage, emergency procedures and first aid and disposal considerations. In this video, you'll learn to administer first aid to a person who has swallowed a chemical product. Most cases of chemical poisoning involve drugs or cleaning products. Find out what type of toxic product has been ingested. Try to determine how much was ingested and when. If the casualty is having trouble breathing, sit them down or help them into a position that aids breathing. Call the emergency services, give them the information you have and follow their instructions. Do not give the casualty anything to drink. Do not make them vomit because a toxic product will burn the lining of their mouth and esophagus the second time on the way out. Give first aid according to the casualty's condition. If they lose consciousness but are still breathing, place them in the recovery position and monitor them until medical help arrives. If they stop breathing, start cardiopulmonary resuscitation, altering 30 chest compressions for two rescue breaths. If you don't know how to give mouth-to-mouth -mouth breathing, do chest compressions, only at a rate of two per second. <laughs>